So our story today is called Different, a story about loving your neighbor. Tomorrow, Obina thought, tomorrow will be the most important day since dad got his new job in the United States. Obina had thought about it on the plane all the way from Nigeria. He'd thought about it while people in uniforms stamped his parents' paperwork. He'd thought about it during the long, hot car ride to Charlotte, to Charleston. Now they were finally here, and so was tomorrow, the first day of school. He carefully smoothed the front of his daishiki. Obina loved his traditional clothes. They took him back home, back to Nigeria. The reds were like the setting sun, crimson behind the mountains. The golds glimmered like the dancing grasses of the savanna. The blues shone like the endless depths of the warm living ocean. Tomorrow, he thought, tomorrow he would show all his classmates what it was like to be Nigerian. The next morning, Obina gulped down his breakfast and rushed out the door, his sneakers pounding the sidewalk, pound, pound, pound. He ran past the neighbors, around the corner store, toward the school gates, and straight into Mrs. Sharonda. Careful, Sugarfoot, cried Mrs. Sharonda, but then she smiled. You're a strong runner. As long as you look where you're going, she said with a wink. New student, I believe you're in my class right over here. The classroom was noisy like classrooms usually are at the beginning of a school day. But when Obina walked in, there was a sudden uncomfortable silence. 20 students were already in the room and 20 pairs of eyes took in Obina's clothing, his hair, his difference. Then 20 people started laughing. Look at his clothes, said one boy. I would never wear that to school, said a girl. And where did he get that haircut, laughed another. Hush now, said Mrs. Sharonda, but it was too late. Obina burst out of the room and ran, pound, 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 through the hallway, past the office, around the corner, into the bathroom he ran, his tears mingling with his sneakers on the tile floor. He pulled off his dashiki and threw it on the ground. Yesterday, Obina cried, oh, how I wish it was yesterday instead. He cried for Nigeria. He cried for the sun and the savannah and the ocean. He cried to be normal, but he couldn't. He was different, different like his dashiki. There was a knock on the door. Obina, it was Mrs. Sharonda. Obina wiped his eyes, sniffed, and went out to his teacher. She handed him a tissue. Her eyes were soft, the kind of eyes that seemed to know exactly what you're feeling without you having to say a word. They sat in silence for a long time. Then, never be ashamed of who you are, Obina, Mrs. Sharonda said. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. I'm not, Obina said. I'll never fit in. But I think that you, Obina, weren't made to fit in, Mrs. Sharonda said. You were made to stand out. You'll see. She gave Obina a hug and helped him put his dashiki back on. And she said, I think our class will need your help in the school relay race. I haven't seen a boy run like you in all my years of teaching. How about we join the class on the field? All the classes from the school were lined up along the field outside. Obina's class hopped, hooped and hollered with excitement, but Obina snuck to the back of the line, his hands deep in his pockets as if he could pull himself in and hide. Yesterday, he thought to himself, The principal stood at the edge of the field. At the sound of the whistle, each class must have one student run the length of the field and return to the line, he said. He or she must tag the next student and they must run the field as well. The first class to have all students finish will be the winner. Are you ready? Three, two, one. There was a sharp blast of a whistle and a student from each class sprinted across the field. Obina couldn't help cheering with the rest of the class. The first student finished and with Obina in line, there were 20 students left, then 15, then 10, then five. Obina's class was tied for first with another class. Three students left, still tied. Two students left. The other class was pulling ahead. One student left and then Obina realized it was his turn. 
He slammed his sneakers into the grass, pound, pound, pound. He pumped his arms. He rocked it across the field. Go, Abena, cheered Mrs. Sharonda. Go, Abena, screamed his class. In the excitement of the race, it seemed everything else was forgotten. His difference, his hair, his dashiki blowing furiously in the wind. He made it all the way to the end of the field and turned around for the final length. The other class's last runner was a little way ahead of him. Obina put on a burst of speed and raced across the field. Pound, pound, pound. He ran past the half marker, past the quarter marker, past the end, and straight into the arms of his cheering classmates. Mrs. Sharonda's class wins, said the principal. Mrs. Sharonda's class screamed and cheered and lifted Obina into their arms, dashiki and all. They marched back to class, this time with Obina at the front of the line. And as the excitement died down, some of Obina's classmates seemed to remember that Obina was different. They saw his hair, they took in his dashiki, but this time... I'm sorry, Obina, said one boy. Me too, said a girl. I think that what you're wearing is pretty neat, said another. Is that from where you're from? Obina grinned. He told them about the crimson sun. He described the golden savanna and the blue oceans. The class was amazed. Mrs. Sharonda, they said, can we learn more about Nigeria? Obina smiled to himself. Today, he thought, today is the best day ever. That is the end of our story. I really like this story for a number of reasons, but one thing to think about with that story is being kind to people that you meet, even if they're different, no matter what, not just because they run a race and win it for your classroom, not just because they might do something for you or do something wonderful, but just because they're human and they deserve respect. That is the first principle that Unitarian Universalists have. Each person has inherent worth and dignity. So treat others with kindness. Thanks so much for joining me today.